Good morning, everyone. I am Gianna Pringle, and welcome to church. Thank you for watching my dad talk about Jesus. Bye. Good morning, everyone. I know I didn't think I'd see you back here in this virtual space, but we're still in the middle of a pandemic. A lot of crazy things are going on in our world. A lot of people are on the edge of their seats. And we've talked extensively this year about unity and about spring and about summer and about fall. And this month I've been talking about unity and talking about how to build a culture and how culture kind of just happens. But what we're kind of in the midst of right now is a time and space where, where many of us are isolated and not around each other. And it makes the days extremely hard. It makes a lot of the things that we do difficult. I mean, just for instance, I mean, we're back closing the doors of the church. And as you've heard, our church, uh, Midtown Collective, the First Baptist Church of Sacramento, uh, we've sold our building. We've sold our um, glorious 92-year-old building to Center of Praise Ministries. And um, the wonderful ministry and church is led by Bishop uh, Loveless. And they've been doing a phenomenal job, and they want to be able to honor the life and the legacy here of the First Baptist Church as they build their new legacy and life center. I'm excited that we were able to get to this point where, because COVID has hit us all extremely hard. I mean, it's the 11th month this year, and we've not even had 90 days of church. It's the 11th month this year, and numbers are skyrocketing, and we're being set back, to, sent back to our proverbial homes and our proverbial rooms. And there was a lot that I wanted to share. I really did. Um, but it's, it's a difficult period of time for everybody going through. So I hope and pray that the message that you'll hear today, it's an old message. It is. But it's one that I pray will give you hope and give you peace and give you comfort. So let's go. Welcome to The Collective, brought to you by FBC Sacramento, where we've been serving Northern California for over 170 years. I am the senior pastor, the Reverend Lamar J. Pringle, and this message is a call to action. Who we are as a community, a body of believers, so different yet united together in Christ on common grounds. I hope while you're listening to this message that your mind and your heart will be ready to receive God's abundant blessings in your life throughout the year. There are jewels tucked in each sermon to help you utilize God's Word so that you will grow to understand yourself more, trust God more, and prayerfully join a community that will teach and encourage you how to reap God's greatest harvest for you every year. Acts Enjoy today's message eight, that will prepare you for each and every season. Now, Later God's angels spoke to Philip. Soon. At noon today, I want you to take a walk over to that desolate road that goes from Jerusalem down to Gaza. He got up and went. He met an Ethiopian eunuch coming down the road. You see, the eunuch had been on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem and was returning back to Ethiopia, where he was a minister in charge of all the finances of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. He was riding in a chariot and reading the prophet Isaiah. Sometimes the road we should be on has some desolate and unhappy moments. Sometimes it's hard to make a change by yourself. Culture is a byproduct of behavior. Like, you would get that, right? And you add to this by people don't need you to relate to them. They just need you to care enough to try. If we only do life with those just like us, there is no flavor, there is no learning, no community, no growth. And that is, that's bland. That's, that's disgusting. We go to different restaurants, ethnic restaurants, because we like the flavors, but yet we don't incorporate those different flavors into who we get to know as people so we can grow as people. Amen. Can you imagine Maybe Philip was kind of excited. Maybe he was initially excited about going on this pilgrimage, and then but maybe he was not that excited at all. You see, the Bible doesn't explain to us whether he was unhappy or happy, but we do know this. Unhappiness 
that desolation can sink in in your unhappy moments, that you can become unhappy, right? You can become sad, desolate, wondering what the next thing can't plan, feeling truck, stuck when there you're in an unhappy moment. And here he is in his chariot, literally reading the book of Isaiah. But as the Bible continues to go on, he was frustrated. Can you relate to living in a moment where desolation sinks in? Where you think that you're getting ready, that you were on an initial pilgrimage. You think that you're having a good time, that you're on the right road, you're on the right path. But then something happens that was unexpected and that desolation begins to sink in. Now, in Acts 8, 29 through 33, this is again Philip reading in the chariot. The spirit told Philip, climb into the chariot. So Philip climbs into the Ethiopian eunuch's chariot. Running up alongside, Philip heard the eunuch reading Isaiah and asked, do you understand actually what you're reading? In verse 31 through 33, he answered, how can I without some help? And he invited Philip into the chariot with him. The passage he was reading was this, as a sheep led to slaughter and quiet as a lamb being sheared, he was silent, saying nothing. He was mocked and put down, never got a fair trial. But who now can count his kin since he's been taken from the earth? This was the passage that caused so much confusion. You know, here is what is significant about this. Way back in Deuteronomy, now funny thing is the book of Deuteronomy, but it actually sounds like a dance, you know, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Anyway, in Deuteronomy 23 verse 1, it reads, no one who has been emasculated by the crushing or cutting may enter into the assembly of the Lord. You see, eunuchs were those that have been crushed and emasculated in those times. Eunuchs were not allowed or permitted in the assembly or in worship or in church. The church or the synagogue or fellowshipping with them was forbidden. It was forbidden to even talk to them. And it's kind of like the history of this church, which is baked into our DNA. Back in 1856, one of our reverends, J.L. Shuck, I mean, I can only imagine what was going on in 1856 in this country. Read it up. The Potawatomi Massacre had just occurred that spring. And the rhetoric that was spilling throughout this nation, that there were fear of revolts and that the Civil War was quietly being discussed. And in many circles around the country, slaves started rebelling and revolting. And California was only about four years old, yet Reverend Chuck was strong and bold enough to make bold moves, like the proclamation and the establishment of the Chinese Baptist Church 20 plus years before Sacramento was even the capital. You see, it takes deep devotion. It takes deep listening and listening ear to hear the Holy Spirit and to move on it boldly. The Holy Spirit had told Philip to enter into a chariot of an Ethiopian eunuch. And this must have initially struck him as odd because Philip must have been aware of that passage back in Deuteronomy 23. Like, whoa, God, we ain't supposed to be in the company of them. That's what your scriptures say. The Holy Spirit. But when the Holy Spirit prompts you, it might fear like fear. Oh, my God, I'm afraid. And you begin to second. And third guess, every decision, running up to the chariot, he hears the man in the chariot reading this passage, and he's reading it in Hebrew, and he's saying it, Isaiah 53, 7, and 8. And that's what listening looks like. He's reading it out loud. What listening to the Holy Spirit looks like. It looks like standing up for people not like you. Boldly facing racism like J.L. Shuck. Or the exclusivity of Deuteronomy 23, excluding people from being in the assembly, to the beauty that beheld this man that had culturally been not accepted in this assembly was revealed just three chapters later. In Isaiah 56, verse 4, it says, The eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, who choose what pleases me, and hold fast to my covenant to them, I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than all the sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will never, that will not be cut off. It's kind of like the resolution that I've read before, that this church will fellowship any brother or sister in Christ, regardless of their place of birth, whether they are born in the north or the south or the east or the west. 
in the countries of the old world, the islands of the ocean. And then when we call on the retainment and the, settle, and the settlement of pastors in this church, no geographical divisions whatsoever shall guide us, shall influence us, influence us in the selection of those that are called to proclaim the glorious gospel of the Son of God. That was written in 1856 about this church. And finally, Acts 8, 34 and 35. And this is finishing up with the eunuch and Philip in the chariot. The eunuch said, can you tell me who is the prophet talking about? Is the prophet Isaiah talking about himself or some other? Philip grabbed his chance. Using this passage as his text, Philip began to preach Jesus to him. Who is he talking about, the Ethiopian eunuch had asked. The Ethiopian eunuch had a desire. He had a want. He not only read the passage, but he wanted to understand it. When someone asks or seeks for help, they will receive it, is what the Bible is saying. And you see, on the other side of the coin, the Holy Spirit was working on Philip. And Philip's obedience to the voice of God prompted Philip to run up to the chariot, get in and preach Jesus. There are those that will enter through the doors of this church one day, in any church, the doors of your life, and they will not look nor represent a certain type you or I may have grown up with. Yet at some point in the Christian experience, we've all had to ask a question or two and answer it. Tell me, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone other? And then we will arise from the opportunity to teach and preach Jesus, teach about a loving Jesus, one that moved a once exclusive group to a now inclusive group, to all that, that confess with their mouths and believe in their hearts that Jesus is Lord and the grave could not keep him. See, that's salvation, unity, harmony. St. Francis said this, start blooming, frozen Christian. Springtime is at hand. When will you ever bloom? If not here, if not now. So if anyone asks you, what's going on in your life? What's going on in your spiritual walk? You say, I'm growing towards a place where I can see the black, the brown, the yellow, the white, the weary, those that need rest, those that have friends and those that wish friendship, those that are homeless and wish sheltering love. Where else can you have these many differences and places of peace? If it wasn't in Jesus' name, I am blessed, beyond blessed, that some, I don't know, 166 years ago, someone paved the way for me, and I accepted the welcome. See, together, we are stronger. And diversity, diversity is a strength if we choose unity. It's a very difficult time. It's a very difficult year. I pray, I pray for you. I pray for your peace, mourn, yes, to those that have an affinity with this building and associate church with a building, mourn it. That makes sense. But we'll see you on the other side of this. We are reimagining how we're going to do church going forward and how we're going to be a community, a community of diversity, community of community members that are doing things together. We're going to be in the community. <laughs> anyway, I love you. And may God always bless your mind so that you can be a blessing to the entire body. We will get, I will give you a few more sermons and we'll try to pray that we don't know when this lockdown is going to end. But I pray that you find in your heart to, to give to this ministry. We may not be in this building, but we're still going to be doing ministry. If the ministry is blessing you, I pray that you give. You go to www.midtowncollective.org and you can click on the giving tab and you can give all your gifts. We bless you and we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that if this ministry is touching you, that you would, you would subscribe to the emails. You would be a part of the new developing and the new reimagining church. We have some really exciting things that are coming up that we're trying to plan in the middle of a pandemic. So um, it is tough. It is, it is difficult. But just make sure you keep praying, praying for your neighbors and stay safe. And I know many of you are going to be spending time together around Thanksgiving. If you can afford to, just be in quarantine. Just not start to limit the amount of people that you're going to be around and keep each other safe. Um, this, is, this is long. It is, it is drawn out. And there's a lot of weird things and unknown. 
Um, I'm telling the adults to make sure you guard your mentals and your heart because kids are out there suffering. Kids are suffering. There's the hope that they used to have is different. You remember when you and I were 17 and 18 or whatever, we thought about college and cars and going out and spending time together. And the world was still really crazy at various times. But this has been nothing like anyone's ever seen before. So be patient with yourself. Be patient with your life goals. Be patient that not everything is on your bucket list or item list has happened this year. But I love you. God bless you. See you on the other side of this. And again, guard your mentals. Guard your chickens. I'm out. Like Welcome month. to The Collective, brought to you by FBC Sacramento, like designer, where we've been serving Northern California for over 170 <laughs> years. I am the senior pastor, the Reverend Lamar J. Pringle, and this message is a call to action. Who we are as a community, a body of believers, so different, yet united together in Christ on common grounds. I hope while you're listening to this message that your mind and your heart will be ready to receive God's abundant blessings in your life throughout the year. There are jewels tucked in each sermon to help you utilize God's Word so that you will grow to understand yourself more, trust God more, and prayerfully join a community.